Good morning. I've been thinking about my body a lot lately, uh, primarily because part of it doesn't work quite as well as it should. About two weeks ago, I twisted my knee and it just doesn't seem to want to get better. As I'm entering into my sixth decade on this earth, I'm beginning to notice that some things just don't work as well as they used to. And I wish that as far as my knee was concerned, it was just an isolated event that I could kind of ignore and forget about. But until I learn how to levitate, every time I go to get up or sit down or walk, anything that requires me to bend my knee, I'm reminded that it's not working right. My whole body is affected by this one joint. The Apostle Paul uses the body as an illustration of how the church works. He writes about it in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. I want to read from the message. I'm going to start with verses 12 and 13. You can easily see how this kind of thing works, looking no further than your own body. Your body has many parts, limbs, organs, cells. But no matter how many parts you can name, you're still one body. It's exactly the same with Christ. By means of his one spirit, we all said goodbye to our partial and piecemeal lives. We each used to independently call our own shots, but then we entered into a large and integrated life in which he has the final say in everything. This is what we proclaimed in word and action when we were baptized. Each of us now is a part of his resurrection body, refreshed and sustained of one fountain, his spirit, where we all come to drink. The old labels we once used to identify ourselves, labels like Jew or Greek, slave or free, are no longer useful. We need something larger, more comprehensive. In other words, what Paul's trying to tell us here is that when we become Christians, we become part of the church. We become integrated with all the other people who are part of the church all around the world. Our identity is not our race, not our politics, our nationality, or our economic status. Our identity is that we are one in Christ. Let's read on verses 14 to 18. I want you to think about how this makes you that much more significant, not less. A body isn't just a single part blown up. It's all the different but similar parts working together, arranged and functioning. If Foot said, I'm not elegant like the hand, all embellished with rings, I guess I don't belong with the body. Would that make it so? If Ear said, I'm not beautiful like the eye, transparent and expressive, would you want to remove it from the body? If the body was all eye, how could it hear? All ear, how could it smell? As it is, we see that God has carefully placed each part of the body right where he wanted it. As much as my knee is bugging me right now, I'm glad I have it. I'd be much worse off if I didn't have one. It's really difficult to walk without that articulation in the middle of your leg. Think of this. You have been gifted by God for a specific role or roles within his body. He created you with this in mind and carefully placed you exactly where he wants you to be. It's no accident that you live where you live. It's no accident which church you happen to belong to. It's not a coincidence. You've been placed there by the sovereign will of God. You have purpose and value. You matter so much to God that before you were born, before even the universe came into being, God was thinking about you and making plans for you. You matter. You're significant. But, let's keep reading. Verses 19 to 24. But I also want you to think about how this keeps your significance 
from getting blown up into self-importance. For no matter how significant you are, it is only because of what you are part of. An enormous eye or a gigantic hand wouldn't be a body, but a monster. What we have is one body with many parts. Each is proper size and proper place. No part is important on its own. Can you imagine eye telling hand, get lost, I don't need you? Or head telling foot, you're fired, your job has been phased out. As a matter of fact, in practice it works the other way. The lower the part, the more basic, and therefore the more necessary. You can live without an eye, for instance, but not without a stomach. When it's a part of your own body you're concerned with, it makes no difference whether the part is visible or clothed, higher or lower. You give it dignity and honor just as it is, without comparisons. If anything, you have more concern for the lower parts than the higher. If you had to choose, would you prefer good digestion or full-bodied hair? You and I cannot operate outside of the body of Christ. No one is self-sufficient. Have you ever watched one of those self-reliant videos on YouTube? You know, the people building their own homes, growing their own food, living off the land, being independent. Cool stuff. It's enjoyable. Except they're on YouTube. How are they recording and uploading their content? Did they dig their own iron ore and make their own tools? Did they manufacture their own silicone chips and, and fiber wire? Like, they're not self-reliant. Nobody is self-reliant. We all need each other. So, first of all, you and I need to acknowledge that we're part of the body and that we need the people around us. We need to spend time with other Christians and build relationships with them, work with them. No lone rangers here. And there's no lone ranger churches either, for that matter. We need to discover our spiritual gifts and put them into practice so that we can fulfill our role within the specific part of the body that we've been placed. How do I do that, you might ask? Well, do stuff in the body of Christ and find out what works. Your default response should always be yes. Let me explain. Too often, when people see a need, they default is to say, no, I can't meet that need. I can't do that. I'm just one person. I couldn't make a difference. Our default, when we see a need, should be to pause and ask God if he wants us to do something. And then we should try. Because each one of us has been gifted by God to fulfill the role that he has placed us in, in his church, in his body. And three, don't forget who you're doing it for. We are part of the body of Christ. It's all about him. It's not about me or you. There are no celebrities in the body of Christ. There are no insignificant parts. Think of how Peterson paraphrased that last part. Wouldn't you rather have good digestion than a full body head of hair? Some of you probably spent a lot of time on your hair this morning. Some of you, not so much. Quick question. When was the last time you thought about your large intestine? When was the last time you concerned yourself about how it was working? I can tell you this, if it's not working right, you know. The visible parts of the body are no more important than the invisible parts. The upfront parts of the body 
are no more important than the parts that aren't seen that much. Think of it this way. Have you ever watched an auto race? F1, NASCAR? The driver's the star. Mick Schumacher, Sebastian Vettel, Bubba Wallace, Ryan Newman. How successful would any of them be without a team? Imagine if they pulled into the pit and had to change their own tires, fill their own fuel tank, and then jump back in and drive onto the track. Actually, what would it be like without even having a car? They'd have to run around the track on their feet, being passed by other vehicles going over 200 kilometers an hour. Remember, the driver and the pit crew don't even own the car. Ferrari, Penske, McLaren, Roush, they own the cars. We're part of a team, the church, and we all have a role to play, whether it's timing laps, changing tires, or driving the car, but we don't own the team. Jesus is the owner. He paid for it all with his life. So in 2021, COVID or no, let's work on our relationships. Our relationship with God, our re relationship with our family, our relationship with the people around us, and our relationship with the church. Let's stop just surviving and begin thriving. Have a great day. And remember, if you'd like us to pray for you, please feel free to contact us through our webpage, evangelchurch.ca, or email info at evangelchurch.ca, or you can call us.